That's right. Welcome in. Welcome back, everybody, to a You Sink My Battleship edition of the Always Irish Show. As always, you can find this program on YouTube. Do hit subscribe if you haven't yet. I'd appreciate that. Give the video a thumbs up upon its completion if you approve of the content. That would help me out as well. Twitter, search bar Always Irish or at JKZND4. Emails, alwaysirishnd at gmail.com. Audio only anywhere you want me, you can get me. Always Irish Radio, 312-988-15. We're going to get back to that this week. I've had a hectic schedule. And then I went to the USC game. That threw off my routine. We're going to get back into the radio stuff this week. More information to come. So, here we are again, folks. Another day, another easy, breezy win for the Irish, 34-6. to No stress, no anxiety. Just relax and watch the Irish beat some Navy backside, right? <laughs> Listen, it, this is just how it is this year. Every single game is going to stress us out. That's just, it's just... It's just what's going to happen. I can't believe it took me this long to finally admit it or realize it or whatever. But it's just going to be stressful. We won the game 34-6 to and I was stressed out. I felt like for three quarters of the game at least. Time-wise and physically in the game, about three quarters I was stressed out. I'm sorry. It's just the way it is. It's just so... It's so interesting, this whole dynamic. Think about it. Like, early in that game, what the offense, some of what the offense was doing or not doing, stressing me out, shouldn't be this hard to move the ball against Navy. And, and I'm on Twitter, and we're all worked up, and everybody's mad. But at the same time, if you were working or flying or something, had your phone off, and then you turn it on, you know you missed the Notre Dame game and you just look at the score, you see 34-6 to and you think, what an easy game. Like in your mind, you're picturing 34-6, to what that might look like. Notre Dame in firm control the whole time is what you envision from just seeing or hearing the score 34-6. It, it just, they're gonna stress us out. They are. They're just going to stress us out. But listen, Notre Dame moves to 8-1, and one, should theoretically move up in the CFP rankings, definitely ahead of Wake. What you're going to do with what they're going to do with Michigan State, I don't know. But a couple teams ahead of Notre Dame lost. We won. That's certainly progress and a great development. Here's one thing. People need to back off everybody that's on Twitter. A bunch of people were saying, you know what? A bunch of you Notre Dame people shouldn't tweet till after the game because you're overreacting early. Ended up being an easy win. No, that's a part of the fun of it is riding that collective emotional roller coaster together through Twitter. That's a part of the fun. We're all in it together. We ride that wave and go back and forth. That's a part of it. So no, I'm not going to stop doing that. Nobody should. That's the whole point of Twitter and social media. React to what's happening in live time. Three hours later, yeah, it was a blowout. But while I was freaking out, it wasn't. So give me a break for expressing that, okay? <laughs> uh, this is a weird season, you guys. For Notre Dame. It just, everything about it is weird. Like, the schedule's weird. The one game we lost is weird. The offense is weird. You at, you're in this transition of some older guys, but a lot of younger guys. You're transitioning there. The schedule has brand names on it, but nobody that's really that good. It's, it's just a weird year. That being said, the track to 11 and 1 seems evident and likely at this point. The next three teams we play are 116th, 99th, and 103rd in yards allowed per play. 11 and 1 should be a lock to me. And then you see where you fall and who you're going to play. 
So, obviously, everybody should be ecstatic with 34 to 6. Lots of good. Lots to, not even lots, but plenty to nitpick. Let's get into it. Now, before we do, I have a couple notes I want to go over. I have two of them. One is, I feel really bad for Avery Davis getting injured the way he did. He, and I've mentioned this before and other people have as well, Avery Davis is the epitome of a team guy. He has been willing to change positions multiple times, be yanked over here, yanked over there, brought over here, think you're going to do this, then they ask you to do that. A lot of guys would complain about that. No, you know, I'm this position. I'm not changing or whatever or transfer out and go play their their preferred position somewhere else. He didn't do that. He stuck it out at Notre Dame for what's best for the team. I respect the hell out of Avery Davis for that. And it's a damn shame this late in the year he went down with an injury. I don't know what their plan is to fill that position the rest of the year. If he's going to be out, I don't know. But it didn't sound that good from the reports. One thing you could try is if Tyree's healthy, flex Tyree there into Davis's position. That moves Diggs into the number two running back position. I don't mind that as a, as a backup plan here, an emergency plan. That helps Diggs get more involved in the game, more carries as the number two. It gets Tyree the ball more often in space because he'll be in that slot spot. And it allows Williams and Tyree to both play more on the field at the same time in some different roles. If you had to go that way, I don't hate it. I like any time you could get Williams and Tyree out there together. Diggs has shown he's more than capable as a number two back behind Kyron. That's not a bad arrangement. Maybe they have something else in mind, but that is one way I think you could navigate this dynamic and make it work the rest of the year. Here's number two, and I love, love, love this note. Chase Ketterer, Notre Dame walk-on. Played the scout team Navy quarterback prepping the team all week. Then, late in the game, got on the field on a kickoff and made a great special teams tackle. Fantastic job, Chase Ketterer. All the credit in the world. These are guys that help the Notre Dame team win, but they're not names you see. They don't get all the accolades and the the stardom and all of that. Guys like this are important. Congratulations to him for having a big day, helping out the team all week behind the scenes, running that Navy scout quarterback position. Gets in the game, makes a really solid special teams tackle. Great job by him. I'm thrilled that he's getting his moment. Great job. All right, let's explore the Notre Dame offense. I feel like it was a really interesting day. Struggles early that were extremely frustrating because they're similar struggles that we've seen over and over and over in those first few drives where all the plays are scripted, allegedly, the first 12 or 15, no matter where they're at. It's all scripted. You work on it all week. We come out and do nothing. Absolutely nothing. That frustration sets the tone for the day on social media that right away you're all nervous for the game and excited that we get the ball do nothing against Navy the first few drives that is going to spark frustration on social media and it should it should okay now we're all riding cone early and it's bad and he didn't see guys well guess what Pro Football Focus has Cone at a 91.8 grade for this week, the highest number of any offensive player for Notre Dame all year. So there's good and there's bad in all this. We end up winning the game by a landslide. Listen, this Navy team's bad. They lost their quarterback, I know, but this is a bad Navy team. But at the same time, you're playing who you're playing. Take them out, okay? Sink that ship, baby. 
Okay? So the dynamic with Cohn is interesting because he struggled and a lot of people like me wanted to see Buckner earlier. All of that. Then he ends up with the highest offensive grade of anybody on Notre Dame all year. Go figure. Like, it's just a weird year. I'm telling you guys, it's weird every week with this team. There's so much going on. Development, but also trying to win now. Figuring out the quarterback thing. Young guys, older guys. The defense has been struggling the last couple weeks, and the offense was doing good. Then this week, the defense was almost damn near lights out, except for a couple plays. And the offense struggled, then they picked it up. It's just, it's always something. You never know what you're going to get from this Notre Dame team week to week this year. You just don't. It is quite the adventure, and my hairline has paid dearly for it, okay? Kyron, amazing again. The last four weeks, 96 carries, 561 yards, okay? Almost six per carry, seven touchdowns on the ground. 23 receptions for just under 140 yards with a touchdown. 792 all-purpose yards. He has really turned it on lately. Also, it is no coincidence, the offensive line has started to look better. It has calmed down. It has started to look better. It is no longer the huge, obvious albatross it was earlier. I am not saying it's to the standard it needs to be to call offensive line you. I am not saying it's good enough to line up against Georgia's front and be productive. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it has gotten better than what it was before. And that's about all you can ask for at this juncture in the year. Okay? So, despite the 34 points and, and uh, Kyron's excitement and Cone grading out very well, we got off to another slow start on offense that I don't understand. Penalties. Three and outs early at home against Navy. How and why? It shouldn't be like that. It just shouldn't be like that no matter what. This is Navy. Not Alabama, not Georgia, not Ohio State. You're playing it's Navy. It is just, I don't care what. You tell me, unacceptable. You're, these are your scripted plays. You're supposed to have them down and just do them. And, and it works. It works. I don't care. Here's the thing. Here, here's the thing. I had all these people say, oh my God, the reason that that happened that we started off slow is because Navy dropped eight and we just we just didn't know what to do. How is that a problem you can't solve on the fly? Once they start dropping eight, then you run the ball up their ass. Why is that so hard? People were telling me, John, you don't know football. Navy dropped eight. You can, it's hard to throw the ball when they're dropping eight. They don't. Check out of it and run the ball because their front is midgets. So that is a horrible excuse. Oh, Navy dropped eight. And just cram the ball right at them then if they drop eight. Check out of it and power run the ball. Why is this so hard? People told me Navy dropped eight. Like I'm just supposed to accept that. That's why we can't do anything. No. They drop eight and you can't throw it. Run the ball on that light box. Why is that so hard to figure out? I don't get it. Those scripted early drives have been garbage. And I'm sick of watching it. To start the game, you do nothing. I'm sick of it. Here's, see, here's the dynamic with this that I struggle with. Okay. You know I'm all about development for the future of what this program's going to be, okay? Here's how I look at this. If you're going to have those first few drives with nothing but miscues, penalties, three and outs, missed reads on 
guys we didn't see open or whatever from Cone. Okay, if that's what the first few drives are going to be, let Tyler Buckner do that. Tyler Buckner can go three and out too. And you know what it's called when he does it? Development. You know what it's called when Cone does it? A waste of my time. Okay? That's the difference. Like, when you're struggling and you're not able to do anything, let the young, the young kid can't do any worse than that. And it's development. When the super senior's not seeing guys open and going three and out, it's a waste of everybody's time. It's not helping you win now, and it's not developing the future. To me, that's called a waste of everybody's time. Now, he turned it on, ended up having a really, uh, and actually a solid day. 23 of 29, 270, a touchdown, no interceptions. Okay? Like, an average of nine per pass. Like, fine. Fine. He ended up turning it on. But philosophically, early on when we're doing nothing on offense, I ask myself, self, what are we accomplishing right now? This effort isn't helping us win, and it's uh, there's also no development going on at the quarterback position. To me, that whole period of time, however many series or drives or minutes off the clock it is, that we're doing nothing is just a waste. It's, it's just a waste. So that's my frustration, and I would have liked to see Buckner earlier than we did. Okay? Earlier than we did. These slow starts are unacceptable to me. I just refuse to accept them, especially against inferior opponents. You start slow against Georgia. I get it because everybody does. You start slow against Navy on offense. You're doing something wrong. You're doing something. Oh, John, they dropped eight. Oh, my God. What are we going to do? How can we figure that out? Eight short guys. Oh, look out. Give me a break. So, having no rhythm early, false starts, not seeing guys open, can't get first downs, I have no patience for that. It's just not helping the cause for anybody. It's just not. That's where I lose my patience. I can't have a super senior in November not seeing Austin and Mayer when they're wide open. I can't have it. I just can't. Okay? So I give him credit for what the totality of the day and the numbers ended up being. A lot of my complaints about all this are not directly Jack Cone problems. It's big picture philosophical. What is the direction of this offense when we're ready to actually win something major? And how do we bridge that gap and grow and get there? So I just don't have the patience for those bad early starts. It's extremely frustrating and unacceptable, okay? So, here's what I love. Now, that was a frustration, and it's been an ongoing one because you're not accomplishing anything during that period of time at all, okay? Here's what I love, though. At many points in this game, you had Buckner, Diggs, Colsey, Evans, Alt, Styles. I think at one point, all of them were out there for a drive except for Styles, but the other ones were. I love that. That, my friends, is your big picture winning future. That's what that is. That is your big picture winning future. Give me as much of this youth group together as possible the next three games. Okay? Give me it. Here's the thing. I was talking to Jack Sacco about this yesterday. I think you're to the point where you can play these young guys and not sacrifice a game on the win-loss tally doing it. That's exactly where Notre Dame needs to be the rest of the year. Able to accomplish two big things at once. Win the damn game you're playing today. And develop all those young guys for the future. That is the sweet spot. 
I do not feel that if you run Buckner out there earlier in the game, we're going to lose, and we just can't trust him to do that or make throws. I don't think that. So I am all about all the guys I just mentioned, Buckner, Diggs, Colsey, Evans, Alt, Styles. As much as they can all play together the rest of the year, the better. And I think you could do it without sacrificing a ball game. That is the sweet spot. That's where I need us to be the rest of this year. Okay? 150 yards rushing. Kyron, 17 for 95. Two TDs, including another highlight real play. Kyron is unbelievably gifted. We're lucky to have him. Diggs, 8 for 59, 23 yard long. This kid is so impressive as a freshman. It's ridiculous. He is going to be a fantastic player. He's already doing great. It's just going to get better. Receiving 280 yards. Austin had 6 for 140. The 70 yard long one, of course, for the touchdown. Kyron had 7. Any time you could get Kyron, I say 10 or 12 catches even, I'm all about it. Get that kid the ball in space. See what happens. Let him make some moves. Mayor four, I say it every week. There is no amount of balls thrown his way where I'm going to say that's too many. Dial it back. No. False. Find him more. Tyree three, Colsey one, Styles one. Again. The more Colsey and Styles are involved in all this, the better for me. Okay? The better for me. So, inexcusably slow start that I have no answers for, but I hate it and I'm sick of it. And that cost us the, the one ball game we did lose this year. Inexcusably slow start, slow to adjust off the slow start. Better ending, obviously, 34 to 6. The more youth, the better. That's what I want. I think you could do it without sacrificing anything in the win loss column. That is how you build Notre Dame's future. Let's flip over to the defensive side of the ball. Quite frankly, great. Great week for the defense and Marcus Freeman. Six points allowed. Here's the big thing. Four missed tackles. Not 13 USC, not 14 Florida State. Four missed tackles. Much, much tighter, better effort. Shut down Navy repeatedly with penetration up front. Heinish was a beast. He owned and wrecked this game was disrupting everything Navy was trying to do. Ten tackles for Kurt Heinisch, one sack, two tackles for a loss. He was all over blowing things up. This was a perfect Kurt Heinisch-like game. Fantastic. He was blowing things up all day. Bertrand, nine tackles. Okay. Dropped for a loss in the backfield. Heinisch, Jason Adamiola, Foskey. Lacey, Batello. I love it. I love it. Other than falling for the trick reverse early in the game when our offense was also struggling, that was frustrating to see, especially because everybody knows, and I mentioned it in the show, that we knew Navy was going to do something tricky, and I said, just don't fall for it. Well, we kind of fell for it. So, didn't like that, but overall, great day. And I know some people on the more negative side are going to say, Navy's offense is really, really bad, really undersized, so what can you take from this? Listen, this Marcus Freeman defense has been struggling the last couple weeks. I don't care who it's against and how bad they are. This was a better performance, and I'm glad to see it. So, I, I, I'm not in the position to say, yeah, but but it's Navy. They needed a good effort. They got a good effort, and it was a good job by everybody. Navy completed one pass, their first in eight quarters. They ran the ball for 
just three yards per carry, which is horrifically low for what Navy tries to do. However you want to look at it, it was a great performance by Marcus's guys. Way to go. Good job. They they knew what they were doing. They blew it all up, took advantage. That's a great job. So here's where this all leaves us. This leaves us. I went over the defensive numbers of the, the teams that we have remaining on the schedule. There's no reason at all Notre Dame should not be sitting at 11-1. and one. I looked late last night just out of pure curiosity, not knowing what I was going to find out. I looked at the t all the teams ahead of us in the playoff rankings, and I looked at their remaining schedules. A lot of these teams are back heavy with tough games down the stretch in November, and I was surprised to see that. There were a lot where I go, man, this is a trap, this is a trap, this is a trap. There's a lot of those teams ahead of us that have a tough November ahead of them with no cupcakes. So I don't know what's going to happen with how this playoff thing's all going to shake out. I don't know. But if you're sitting there at 11-1 and one and that's your low-end rebuild year, that's a sign you're a pretty solid program. Not elite, not enough to win a, a playoff game yet, but solid. With the talent we have in the program and the way recruiting looks, you do some things right. Notre Dame's in a good position moving forward. How good? We have to wait and see. But there's going to be and is a lot of talent in South Bend. Till... Next time, have a good evening.